I'm Jordan. This is unedited. are so excited to be here. Are you excited? I'm so excited. We have no clue what's going to happen, <laughs> how this is going to go, but we are just thrilled to be here today. So if you're tuning in with us today, we would absolutely love you just to say hi or give us your name, a high five, just anything in the comments to let us know that you're here. Um, we are excited and we're happy that you're joining this journey with us today. So as we go along this journey, you're going to learn lots of different things about Jordan and myself and experiences. Um, but right now, we just want to give you just a little intro of who we are before we begin. So my name is Yasmin, and I am a mother um, of four children, um, two adult children. So I actually have a son-in-law as well. Um, I'm from Saskatoon. I was born in Saskatoon. I've stayed in Saskatoon my whole life. Um, but funny enough, uh, my family um, immigrated here from Wales. So I was the very first born Canadian in my family. But now I'm here, and Saskatoon stuck with me so Jordan yes my name is Jordan um, I'm also married I have two daughters um, I'm not from Saskatoon but I love this city I'm from northern Manitoba actually a small city called Thompson um, which would probably explain why I love winter so much and uh, I like snow this is my time of year I'm enjoying it Christmas is coming up I hope you have some grace for winter too because I kind of like it so <laughs> but uh, yeah so and uh, I've been living here for a while I'm just uh, so happy to be here with you on unedited mm -hmm. and uh, enough about us what we're going to be talking about throughout our episodes is we're going to have different segments that we're going to be looking at mm -hmm. every week we're going to tell you what's in the news and that could be something either in pop culture that can be a world event that could be a local event that could be some sort of um, just random thing that's going around social media that's causing a lot of commotion <laughs> that we want to talk about but uh, yeah we're going to be talking about in the news we're going to be talking about in our city we're going to be talking about our community uh, going to special events mm -hmm. um, checking out people in their workplaces and seeing what they're up to and what they're doing and also uh, really just supporting our local businesses yeah. and stuff. I think that's so important right now uh, considering the time that we find ourselves in. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go to the talk, which every single week we will talk about something along the lines that goes with our, our vision and purpose of discovering God, community, and purpose. And so I'm excited to get going. So excited. So this week, we're going to be talking about something in music. And uh, I don't know if you've heard, Yasmin, but Adele just dropped her new record. And uh, it's a big deal. It's everywhere. Um, you know, you, can't, you can't, can't turn the channel without hearing about it somewhere. And uh, she just did an interview this past week, I think, too, with Oprah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. that was a quite, a, quite a special thing to be, you know, broadcasted live on TV for her fans. And um, yeah, her new album's out. And I'm just wondering, have you listened to it? Have you researched it, looked into anything about it? Yes, I did. Yeah, it came out yesterday. And I mean, if you didn't know that, um, you must not be on social media at all because <laughs> it's everywhere. Um, and it's called 30, the number 30, um, which Jordan actually shared with me today that she's not actually still 30 because usually it's the age that she brings out the album. Mm -hmm. But you had shared with me that it was the age that this happened to her, right? Or, yeah. yeah, it was yeah. A time, the period of time where she's kind of writing from. Yeah. So and it's well, in one word, it, 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 vulnerable, very, very. <laughs> Very raw, very real, very vulnerable. Um, it uh, talks about her divorce, uh, motherhood, uh, dating as a famous person, which I mean, neither of us know what that's <laughs> like, um, and falling in love. And so there were a lot of really sad, real moments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I'm enjoying it. I mean, she's so talented. Like her yeah. voice is just legendary, really. Right. Um, the and all of her instrumentals, all of her band, like they are so talented. I enjoyed the music end of it a yeah. lot, right? Yeah. So No, absolutely. I agree. I agree. This this album's interesting because it was kind of steeped with controversy a little bit for like the 1% of us who still buy vinyl records. Um, <laughs> this whole thing. When the, <laughs> I, I love vinyl records. I collect quite a bit. And when this whole thing was coming about, it was reported that she actually pressed half a million copies of her new album on vinyl. <laughs> and there were reports that this is why everything else in the vinyl industry was being delayed because uh, this was such a big release that it was being pushed to the front and uh, I'm still waiting on albums and <laughs> sometimes when I go to the store I ask if something's in they say no and I just mutter Adele and, uh, 
kind of under my breath, right? Poor but, but I'll get over it. You know, I'm going to get past this. It's not a big deal. You know, Adele seems like a great person and I just need to let this one go. There's been I reports so. actually defending her this week saying that it wasn't her that slowed things down, but that production in the vinyl industry is just bad in general. But, uh, you know, I'm going to get over it and I'm going to let this one go. And, uh, you know, I did listen to her record this past week and uh, I thought it was pretty good. I, I, th yeah. I, th I thought, you know, Adele, you go to her mainly for her voice. And I think that's yeah. the big thing that people <clears throat> kind of um, resonate with when they listen to her music. Um, was there a song that stood out to you? Anything that kind of stood yeah. out to you from your listening? Yeah, very much so, actually. That's why I've got my little notes here today, because I didn't, I want to, of course, quote her properly. But uh, the song's called I Drink Wine, which mm -hmm. actually isn't really about her drinking wine. I think there's one line in the, in the whole verse. Mm -hmm. um, but there was, uh, she had said that it was about shedding her ego. Mm. which was really interesting to me. And there is a few things that I think a lot of us could relate to. Um, these are a few of in her, verse one and verse two, a few things that she said that I haven't actually stopped thinking about since, but it says we're in love with the world, but the world wants to bring us down by putting ideas in our head that corrupts our hearts somehow. And wow. she said, why am I obsessing about the things I can't control? Like, hello, me. <laughs> uh, why am I seeking approval from people I don't even know? And then wow. in her chorus, her main chorus, she goes, so I hope that I can learn to get over myself. Wow, that's good. Like, yeah. sometimes it's just, like, not about us, right? And that's, no. that's a very bold statement to say that it is usually ourselves that we yeah. have a hard time getting over it. Yeah. So, yeah, it really touched me. I've listened to it a few times with a few tears, actually, yeah. <laughs> when I've listened because she's got that effect on a lot of people. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. How about you? Did you enjoy one that stood out to you anyways? Yeah, I, I yeah. definitely like the album. Like I said, like, I, I, I go to Adele for her vocals more than anything. But this yeah. time around, there was a vulnerability. There was something that uh, the album was just filled with emotion. She went through a terrible time when she was writing it and kind of was just sharing her experiences right mm -hmm. uh two two tracks stood out to me one was called hold on um it's an interesting track because it's it's very subtle it's very quiet and then her it kind of picks up in the middle but then her voice brings the whole thing kind of home at the end right yeah and the whole song has some it has some pretty tough lyrics throughout the verses but the chorus is uh this is just this idea of hope just hold on you know things are going to get better things will improve and i think a lot of people are going to relate to it lyrically oh, i think yeah. a lot of people are going to find that message uh just something that they need to hear and uh yeah it was good there was another song also just actually the track after it called to be loved uh it might be one of the darker tracks on the album uh she has been quoted as saying that she probably won't perform this one live um a gentleman who uh helped her compose on her last album tobias jesso jr played piano on it and uh he's one of my favorite artists um as well and uh it's minimal but the vocals and lyrics carry the whole thing and that's what i find about this record is regardless of what's happening musically adele's vocals just shine through so They're powerful huge. yeah yeah she's yeah. so good so, so good yeah, so I encourage you to check it out. I think it's worth a listen. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's something that you're going to have on, you know, heavy rotation, but uh, <laughs> it'd be worth checking out, worth uh, looking into. And uh, yeah, I could see why the hype's there because uh, it's a big album and uh, you could tell she put a lot of work into it. Yeah. 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 Awesome. So if you've checked it out already, let us know what you think in the comments or maybe point out what stood out to you. Maybe if a, a certain lyric, a certain song, maybe an emotion, something that she'd shared with us or with you. Um, I would love to hear that today. Um, it's nice not to just have our opinions because Absolutely. there might be people out there that this is the most meaningful record they've ever heard. So we'd love to hear that. Yeah. Um, and now we've actually been really busy this week. Yeah. Hey, checking out things. We're yeah. getting in the Christmas spirit. There's All these things are happening happening There's a lot happening a in the lot city. happening in the city yeah. and in your communities like everywhere right so we're going to show you a couple things that we've been up to this past couple weeks oh, it's all snowman that's the theme even snowman covid my favorite part about this is the little raccoon at the, the raccoon. Bottom. different cultures. Look, because they got Every Child Matters, they got a Mexican sombrero, they got Britain, nice. Japan. That's cool. I like it. Celebrating diversity. Good tree. It's a very good tree. bear sign. I, I, I totally would want this. If he wants this, this we yeah. can figure out where we got it. He yeah. got it. Gotta figure that out. Even a 
of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation puzzle. Okay, well, I'm in. Because it looks like people made the decorations. Yeah. We always have a tree at home that is all the kids' ornaments, right, that they've made? Yep. And that's what that reminds me of. We have the secret life of pets tree here. Mm -hmm. Which ornament is your favorite on this one? I know what Jordan's gonna say already. Yeah, I like this dog. Just like that how dog. chill that he is, right? And I um, like the cone. <laughs> I like that he's got a cone. Yeah. I think this guy here is. Look at the ears. ears. <laughs> yeah. Look at all the different gingerbread houses. Does that come with the sled? <laughs> Definitely not. I'm wondering though, honestly. This is Don't property of the Western Developed Museum. Is that what it says? An estimated 1949. So no. great videos. Uh, Ashley worked really hard on there. She comes and she follows us around and she's there for hours and hours to make us a little cute, little condensed version. So yeah, thanks, Ash. um, yeah, awesome. thanks Ashley. It's so great. Um, we went to Festival of the Trees and we really enjoyed ourselves, like really so did. And I will say none of us were in the greatest mood when we got there. No. Do you remember that? No, we... no. So Ashley was kind of in the mood and I was kind of quiet and Jordan was and like, I was waking up. It was, was... We went early in the morning. So, <laughs> and so, but once we went there and spent time you know like hanging out and doing whatever yeah. it, it was great like we had a great time the trees yeah. were beautiful the volunteers are so friendly and amazing yeah I talked to a couple of them who were really excited to tell us about these 1100 ornaments that had been um, donated yeah, um, by a daughter who so had cool. lost her mother like in memory of her mother and mm -hmm. they're like classic ornaments like Looney Tunes and ones from like the 80s and stuff there's Barbie ones and Disney ones just beautiful Hallmark ones yeah. so so it's worth checking it out just to see those ornaments, I think. So 100%, I'd agree. And it's interesting because when we talked before, we looked at all the trees first, then we talked to that volunteer who let us yeah. know about that. And we were kind of wondering, like, where do you find this stuff? Like, where would you find a tree that can decorate Looney Tunes or like Barbie or mm -hmm. something like that? And uh, no, I thought it was really good. I thought it was neat how different our opinions were on the trees. <laughs> That's <laughs> some so of true. us seem to think that purple and blue are Christmas colors, and some of us don't. Wow. And so. Uh, <laughs> We've been, we were having some fun discussion with that, but no, the Festival of Trees is awesome. It's one of those things that I know that I plan for, my family plan mm -hmm. for. Even when we didn't live here, we would uh, visit family during that time and pretty much go to it every single Christmas season. It's a part of Christmas for us. So Yeah, yeah. and all the proceeds go to the Children's Hospital, Absolutely. which makes it even better. So people who are spending $800, $900 on a tree, yeah. <laughs> um, it's all going to a great cause. So um, And they're beautiful. Oh, and I did ask the volunteers because I said, I really like this tree, Jordan, but like, if I took it home... 
I could never make it look like that again. Yeah, we were wondering, how do these like, things leave these, that room? Well, I guess they like <laughs> specially wrap them and like wrap it all up so that when it's delivered to each place that they're all still intact. So anyways, yeah. just in case you want to buy one and you're wondering about that, we found that detail out. So. That is true. Yeah. And I'm also going to mention that there are a bunch of cool gingerbread houses there as well. Yeah. Um, there was actually one that was decorated in the theme of National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to talk myself out of not purchasing it <laughs> for a hundred and some dollars. Yeah. Um, it was so cool though. It, was, it had Cousin Eddie in it, had like, you know, his old little blue uh, trailer vehicle outside, had the lights going. Uh, go check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll find the place just, uh, it'll get you in that Christmas mood. I just got a good feeling. So. Yeah, it was great. It was great. <laughs> and then what about the parade and standing Ooh. outside for so long? Yeah, you know, I, I said I liked winter at the beginning here, so I got to stick with it. But that was probably the <laughs> coldest day we've had, right? Because, you know, it was a little bit brisky out there, but uh, I thought it was fun. I, I love parades. Ever since I was a kid, just uh, seeing kids have fun, seeing the displays, um, different things happening out there. And uh, yeah, I thought it was great. So was Santa part of your tradition growing up? Like, did you... Yeah, yeah, yeah? definitely. You went definitely. to go visit Santa, wrote letters to Santa? Yeah, like, totally, totally. Yeah. yeah, in school we did that. We had our Christmas concerts uh, throughout the year, uh, going to the mall to see him once a year, uh, to tell him what I wanted was a big part of growing up, even yeah. in northern Manitoba. And uh, yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I remember my wife telling me a story once about how uh, it was December 24th and they were driving home after like a, I think it was like a Christmas service, church service or something like that. And uh, she saw Santa walking down the street. And as a young, young kid, probably age seven or so, she, she, she determined she had to get home and get to sleep because if he got to her house before, before she was sleeping, she wouldn't get any gifts or anything, right? Well, if she would have so. been living in Saskatoon, I would have said that that was my dad. Yeah, that's right. You told me about that. Because <laughs> my dad on Christmas Eve dresses up as Santa Claus every <laughs> single year and goes house to house delivering presents. So well, it could have... epic. Which is pretty cool. Like it. Um, it, <laughs> until they're about five, they figure out it's grandpa and not, <laughs> yeah. and not my dad. But anyways, or not that's Santa. Good. But yeah, it's kind of cool. So yeah. yeah. Awesome. So what are your traditions? What, what do you do at Christmas? Do you guys check out these things? Write them in the comments. Jordan and I would love to go see some of the things that you like to do at Christmas. So if there's some kind of event or something in your community happening, Agreed. especially Christmas related, yeah. we would love to show up in the next uh, few weeks. So just write that in the comments and hopefully we can make arrangements to do that. We're coming to a portion where we want to, you know, have a chit chat. Today's yep. going to look a little different than most weeks because it's our first episode. So we kind of want you to know what we're about and what our vision is and what you're kind of joining. So we're going to talk about our three different visions. And our first one is discover community, um, which is a very, very important thing. Um, knowing your community, being part of your community, having community. Um, and I don't know about you, but the last 18 months, <laughs> to two years, uh, community has been challenging. It has um, changed things a little bit. It's changed for sure. things a little bit, yeah, or maybe it hasn't with everybody, but around you has changed. Um, the way we do things have changed. Um, COVID has been a challenge. Definitely has, yeah. Right? And I don't know about you, but I mean, you don't even sometimes realize how much you need people until yeah. you don't have them anymore. Yeah. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, um, I've always known that I love being people with people and being around people, but all of a sudden when, you know, you're restricted to only your house mm -hmm. or those uh, big events that you like feed off of and you love to show up when there's like thousands of people in there and all of a sudden you can't do those things. It, it does actually change you, right? Absolutely does. Yeah, no, definitely. I think each one of us has experienced some of that during the COVID season. Um, it's interesting how it, it, it just happened so suddenly, right? So um, I, I was on like a five week sort of like parental leave at the time. And I had all these plans to go out West and go visit people and, uh, yeah. you know, hit BAM for something like that. And then all of a sudden the world just kind of shut down. And I think we all found ourselves in interesting spots. I think some of us who are a bit on the introvert side uh, at the beginning, we're like, maybe oh, we, enjoy we, it. We, we, we can handle this a little <laughs> bit. Right. But I it, think it, so. It's funny yeah. though, because you know, you give it five or six months and even the introverts are wanting people yeah. back. Right. Like, yeah. and, and we're wanting to have that community and just being around one another. So definitely, COVID has definitely uh, changed things. I think it's made us realize how much more we need each other. Um, one thing I've always said is that you can't do life alone. Um, yes. I firmly believe that, firmly that, that believe we need that one another. And I think that's part of our vision here. Well, it is that that is our vision with yeah. um, unedited and uh, just even just meeting online digitally in, in this community mm -hmm. is so that we can get to know one another. 
and uh, really just um, come together in a time where I think there's still a lot of uncertainty in the world. And uh, I think all of us are just wanting to probably get back to something normal, right? Yeah, whatever so. that new normal will be, right? Yeah. But I do agree with you, like doing this, having this journey with everybody is mm -hmm. trying to bring community into our homes mm -hmm. and being digital. Well, hopefully that's a way now, right? That it won't be taken away, that there's still a way to do that, right? So Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's been crazy. And some of you, you know, maybe you're still at home, right? With the kids and with the things, depending on what season you're walking through, what your workplace looks like. And um, this might be something that you can reach out to, people that you can talk to and stuff like that. But I have realized not even just myself personally, but local businesses, local places um, yeah. to go to, um, how they need our support too, 100%. right? So it's yeah. not just about, oh, how does Yasmin feel better by being around people? It's showing up and, you know, giving your money to some of these local places and showing them your support because they've had a rough go at it too, right? Definitely. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Everything's just been kind of pulled out underneath them mm -hmm. and uh, everyone's trying to rebound now. And so I think that's part of how we could also love our community is by supporting it and uh, going and getting that coffee from your favorite coffee shop, visit your favorite final store. And uh, <laughs> sorry, yeah. I have to throw it in there. But uh, no, there's so many ways we do community. There's so many ways that we love our community. Um, actually, this past week, we did something a little bit unique. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Yasmin and Ashley and I, uh, we took a little break uh, during the work week and we decided to go bowling. And I think bowling uh, probably says more about community sometimes than I we agree. think. But uh, why don't you check out this video? Jordan, <laughs> which I didn't think so, but these pins don't like me, so <laughs> it's their fault. Okay, come on, come on, there it is, you got it. No! Nope. Come on! Yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it slipped out of my hand! Oh, It's hard to say. I'm in a bad place. I think she's going to do it. I got a feeling. I got a feeling. It all went downhill after frame uh, seven. We're warmed up, but he got overconfident, we think. I did. I yeah. think so. I, I think so. I think I got a little too into it, and uh, I'm going to have to find my happy place out here again. It was so good. I, I, I haven't bowled in years and yeah. I forgot how fun it was. What did you think? It was awesome. We did 10 pin, which at first Jordan wasn't too sure. He's like, why did you choose 10 pin? And I don't know why I did. I just thought, you know, 10 pins versus five. Growing up in Thompson, they only had five. So I was, <laughs> I was a little nervous about what might go down so there. So he was a little so. nervous, but we started playing. I actually was doing really good. Like I know my score didn't show that I was doing good. You were. But like, what was with the one pin? I know, every like, single. Every single time <laughs> that pin wouldn't go down right and I was like doing what I'm supposed to like right down the lane like yeah. you know yeah. and it's not working so the first one I beat Jordan and I was feeling pretty good about myself I'm thinking oh okay yeah. and then he like totally kicks my butt in the next <laughs> round because <laughs> he figured out his groove is what happened yeah. right you figured out your spin it's I, all about the spin I, right? I, I locked in yeah, yeah, yeah I locked in we'll just say that okay yeah uh, I don't know if that's bowling language or not but no it was crazy how you could not get a strike without that one pin staying up right like, well and I actually that, that pin just wouldn't go down for you. Never, so, ever. So, and you threw the ball better than me almost every shot. Like, it was straight down the middle. <laughs> so. He got better. I got worse. Ashley got better, too. Yeah. It was just me. For some reason, I think that one pin just, like.
like it was a mental thing. Yeah. yeah. Are you over it? Are you feeling okay? I, I think I'm over it, but I do think we should go more. Yeah, I do too. Hey, do like too. that was yeah. like such a good afternoon yeah. and just broke up the day. It was kind of what we did on our lunch break, sort of yeah. like, you know, yeah. kind of went out. And yeah. so, yeah, I highly recommend it, uh, yeah. especially in the workplace, right? Yeah. It's good for team building. I say bowling needs to be a regular part of life on company time yeah. if possible. And Maybe your uh, boss will pay for it. Just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Enjoy that. And I think, I think you, you, you'll find that it brings you together. And I don't know, maybe it's just a way to, uh, I don't know, take your mind off things and just kind of, uh, I don't know, have fun, right? Yeah, and there's high fiving if you're comfortable with high fiving. Uh, yeah, yeah. And this bowling alley, like they had all the rules in place. It felt clean and yeah. safe. Very and, well done. Yeah, very well done there. So, um, and really quiet in the afternoon. So it was like the whole <laughs> alley was ours. So, yeah. right, it was nice. Yeah. No, very good. Uh, one of the reasons why we went bowling, why we're bringing up bowling, is because I think bowling has a lot more to do with community than maybe we realize. Um, years ago, I read this book by Robert Putnam. It's called Bowling Alone, and uh, in this book, he talks about basically the collapse of community uh, across North America and across the landscape that happened probably. Um, he's leaning more towards the 80s and 90s, but kind of where we find ourselves today. Now, I don't know about you, but growing up in the North, my parents were in a bowling league in mm. the 80s. Yeah. And uh, it was fun for us because my cousin, every single Wednesday would come, uh, you know, babysit us. And uh, for us, it was cool hanging out with him for three hours. But I know mom and dad had such an awesome time visiting with their friends every single week at the bowling alley. And they never just visited there, but they also did tournaments. They had special events that went on. Oh, yeah, and parents, bowling yeah. leagues were packed. Like, packed. Like, like, Every single night the bowling alley was packed. You couldn't get in there for like special games like you can no. now, right? Yeah. And uh, and then so what Putnam argues is that somewhere in the late 90s towards the early 2000s, um, bowling just disappeared and the leagues disappeared and uh, people just didn't frequent the places often. Mm -hmm. And uh, he blames a bit of it to do with the rise of maybe this and just being on our phones and technology yeah. and different things like that, where we got so individualistic that maybe we forgot how, how good it felt, you know, to meet our friends at the bowling alley. But I think it teaches us a pivotal lesson that community isn't just some sort of add on. It's just not an extra, but it's something that we genuinely need. Yeah. And uh, that I think, especially in the eighties, watching my parents do it at the bowling alley. I think that was so real so genuine they had a blast um yeah my parents were so happy yeah my parents were so happy when they came home actually i remember my mom she's crazy i just thought of this right now she was pregnant with one of my sisters mm -hmm. and she bowled like all the way to the end and yep. at the end of the year when the baby was about to be born my sister latara they yep. gave her a big huge plaque they made her a huge plaque that she was the youngest bowler right they made yeah. it for latara because That's latara awesome. bowled it through the holy <laughs> like they were so close and yeah so and believe it or not which is kind of crazy the building that we're in right now mm -hmm. used to be a bowling alley That's one true. that i was a part of this is the league yeah. that my parents attended was in this building as well as myself so that's yeah. kind of weird yeah. right like <laughs> no, kind of weird cool. yeah that's very cool but so much fun um yeah they hung out together they looked forward to it uh i just remember my parents being really happy yeah you know like really happy and talking about those people they loved those people you know absolutely so, yeah absolutely and so i don't know i just encourage us to get involved in different kind of community events, different things like that. I know in the summer golf is kind of what does that for me, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think Putnam's onto something in his book, Bowling Alone. It was written a long time ago, but it's a very pivotal book. I think it explains a lot of what we're missing in our culture. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, uh, community, um, unfortunately, sometimes is underrated um, as a need. And, and what we have. And so um, there's a scripture though that talks about this too that I think is helpful for us as far as uh, yeah. needing one another. Do you wanna read it for us, Jasmine? Yeah, so I'm in the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 24 to 25, and this is what it says. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as it is a habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Um, this stir up one another in love and good works. Yeah. Like it's quite beautiful when you think of it really, right? right? Like encouraging one another, being there for one another, not necessarily just complaining about everything, but actually stirring up good works and good deeds and, and things to be encouraging and not neglecting to meet together. Like, yeah. and that's what we've done, right? Like, yeah. and, and I'm not even just saying, cause some of it we couldn't obviously yeah. prevent, but isn't it harder now to leave the house yeah I it, agree. It, right like the, things are become harder right we kind of got into a, a groove yeah. right of not going anywhere or having people over or doing any of those kinds of things and so now we're starting to neglect meeting together right 
I would agree. And I think it, it, you know, we almost become conditioned to what our new normal is, right? Yeah. And like, I was the kind of person who liked to be out and about all the time. Like even on evenings Me where too. I'd sneak yeah. out to a bookstore and just mm -hmm. read a book or something, I would do it, right? Yeah. And have a coffee. But you get so conditioned to staying home there, especially in those first, you know, few months of this pandemic when it started, mm -hmm. that it becomes a new normal to you. And then going out sometimes, you sort of have to push yourself to do it. But I encourage you, push yourself to do it, right? Yeah. Uh, do it in a safe way, of course, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and follow all sorts of guidelines in which we find ourselves in. But uh, no, I, I think it's essential that we get together. I think it's it's something that we shouldn't neglect. It's something that we need. And it's something that uh, should encourage us to, to do good and to, to do good in our city. And so. it goes with what you said, like we are supposed to do life together. We need each other, right? Yeah. Like we are supposed to do this life together and uh, encouraging one another is a big, big part of that. So, yeah. Yeah, community is huge and uh, on unedited, we want to discover it. So I've had many jobs throughout my life. Um, I started working when I was young. I, I think there was just something about acquiring money that seemed desirable as like a 12-year-old <laughs> kid, right? Uh, especially when the ice cream truck was driving around the neighborhood. I always thought it'd be good to have some extra money, money for that. Yeah. yeah. But I remember starting as a paper boy. I delivered papers uh, when I was younger. Uh, what always annoyed me about that job, this is a total side tangent that has nothing to do with anything, but uh, I just have to get it off my chest. There was a video game back in the day called Paper Boy where he yes, rode on his I bike know. on Nintendo, yes, right? Yes, and he old. rode on his bike and every time he he, he, he went throw. by a house, he would throw a paper. But that's totally to not do, what you got you to do. You don't need to do that. <laughs> they have that on some movies too and they can't just wax a paper. Yeah. I know. And I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like I have to be all polite and put it in the mailbox, yeah. right? But you know, that must have been like American paper boys, right? Like wing, 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 right? Because in Canada, <laughs> There's snow. Uh, we just, exactly, we just couldn't even be on our bikes at that time. So, so th they were the lucky ones, I think in that sense. Anyways, I'm going to keep going going and uh, get back to the point here. But I have had lots of jobs throughout life. I, I was a paper boy. I worked at a golf course. I uh, I was uh, I worked, I worked at A&W. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I worked at A&W for five years, actually, just throughout high school. That was a ton of fun. Had a good crew. Uh, I was really a blast. Uh, worked in the clothing store. I was a projects coordinator in the city. I think one of my favorite jobs, though, that I had, though, was being a waiter. Have you ever done that before? Yeah, I was a waitress or whatever, waiter, yeah, yeah. server. Yeah. Um, and I actually liked it, yeah. Yeah. It, it, a lot of craziness but um, and busyness, yeah. but it was great. Yeah, no, I really it, liked it. it. You're really with people. Exactly. Like you're really interacting and make the people feel good, and I've always liked to do that. So, um, yeah, and the tips huh, were always great. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> you good. You made more on tips than you do on a wage, but... <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciated that aspect, yeah. too. But it made me more personable, for sure, and it, it was less scary to talk to people after being a waiter. For sure. I, I do. I, when you said busy there, you made me think of something. When my first couple shifts as a waiter, I remember going to sleep and I had a tough time sleeping for those first couple nights because I had a dream that I had food up and that I was supposed to take it to a table or something like that. I kid you not. Uh, my mind was just racing, I think, at that job because uh, I was in charge of a ton of tables and stuff. But it was fun nonetheless. So, uh, yeah, being a server, being a waiter was great. Um, I've had lots of jobs. Now I find myself as a pastor and, uh, and that's been great as well and awesome. But uh, in, in everything that we're talking about here, we're talking about purpose. And I think mm -hmm. we do a disservice sometimes when we uh, limit our purpose simply to what we do 40 hours a week. What would you think about that? I agree. Well, first I have to make a comment about your dream. Okay. Because it's funny. I didn't have one when I was serving, yeah. but I worked at Pizza Hut. Okay. okay? <laughs> and I, <laughs> for quite a while, and I worked the really early morning shift before I went to high school. Okay. So I'd work at like five o'clock in the morning and I'd have to get all the dough ready. So all the dough in the pans, like small, medium, large, extra large stuff crust, all that kind of thing. I'd have to get it all ready. And I would have dreams <laughs> of making dough. <laughs> and I know this because somebody, yeah. my, I think it was my sister or my mom. I can't remember who it was that I was sleeping and talking out loud <laughs> saying, I don't think it's enough dough. They're going to need more dough. <laughs> and so I'm like dreaming of it. And I always smell like dough. And I know that you might think that's a good thing, but it's not. My clothes always smell like that yeasty kind of smell. <laughs> it was awful. But anyways, uh, yeah, no, I've had lots of different jobs too. Fast food serving. Um, I worked at American Eagle. So I've done uh, nice. like retail and stuff like that. Managed that store. I've 
even worked in aviation. So I have my radio license and stuff and worked in the airport. And so I've got lots of different experiences. Um, some that I truly love. I am a born leader. That is uh, what I've discovered over time, that I'm not just bossy, that I'm actually <laughs> a good woman leader. Hear I, me I never roar. thought you were bossy, so uh, just for the record. So um, anyways, so yeah, we did all that. But I will say this, though, over the years and the different roles that I play, because I am a mother, too. Absolutely. Um, and there's a lot of mothers who don't actually go outside the household to be employed and they stay home. And I think we forget the value of some of these other roles that we play in our lives, Absolutely. Uh, whether you consider them a job or a purpose. Uh, me being a mother is often, you know, thrown aside sometimes in the corporate world, right? Like, yeah. well, you need to be here. Mm -hmm. But that is the most important role that you play. I think um, yeah, there's nothing more full time than that. There isn't sure. like for generations that affects them for their lives. Um, yeah. I think ministry begins at home, mm -hmm. at that table, being a good husband, being a good wife, yeah. all of these things, I think, impact of being a good friend. Mm -hmm. Like I, I find my purpose in being a good friend. I like yeah. to be someone that someone counts on. Um, so I don't think it's all about the paycheck, I guess no. is my point. No. That sometimes your purpose isn't to do with the paycheck, like what your job is, right? So I agree hundred percent. And I think sometimes in our society, we've communicated that to people that yeah. if you just get that right, right job, if you just get that right opportunity, if you just end up in that right spot, then you're going to be fulfilled in your purpose. And sometimes your purpose has nothing to do with what you, what you get for a paycheck, but it has exactly. so much to do with just so many aspects of your life, including family, including God, including um, just different things that you devote your time to and that, that, that should take priority. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I used to work with teenagers, I would often uh, give them talks and towards the end of the year, I would celebrate their graduation. And I, I, I I've seen so many of them so often kind of stressing out about, well, what's my purpose? What's my, they would use the word calling, right? Like, what am I supposed to yeah. do after school? And, and, and as if we should put that much pressure that they have to have this figured out by the time they're 17. And anyways, we, do, right? though. we do. That was yeah. like my daughter's biggest stress, right? <laughs> what are you supposed to do for the rest of your life? Right. Yeah. 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 And so, so I would often talk to them around that time of year. And one of the things I would often tell them is don't limit it to what you do 40 hours a week for a paycheck. Right. I agree. Uh, some of us are going to work in various jobs that, you know, they're going to be fun. They're going to be great, but they're not necessarily going to be our purpose. There's a greater purpose out there, I think, for each one of us. And uh, that's something on an edited that we really want to, I think, uh, look into and uh, begin to discover what that is for, for each of us. Now our last vision um, that we were hoping to show you on this unedited, we've talked about our community, we've talked about purpose, and now discover God. Um, and many of you tuning in may have an opinion of who God is, who he isn't, um, if he's real to you, if he's not real to you. Um, but we are going to share with you as we go along this journey how he's real to us, yeah. um, how we've seen him work in our lives, um, seen amazing things happen, and we wanna share that with you. So very often we will come back to scripture. We'll talk to scri about scripture. We'll explain scripture because yeah, some absolutely. of it's extremely confusing Very much and so. makes no sense. But once you start to learn about it and learn the context behind it, um, you'd be amazed at uh, what you can learn, like real good truths for living your life, you yeah. know? Yeah. So... No, absolutely. And uh, yeah, we definitely want to come back to the scriptures. We want to give you a bit of a broader context of what's happening in those days. Sometimes it's not as simple as opening it and reading as though it was written for 2021, right? And there's a lot of context <laughs> so and history there that yeah. we would be better off explaining. But no, we, we want to share with you our experiences about God. Um, Jesus in John chapter 14, verse 6 said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. And uh, I want to share with you, and Yasmin wants to share with you just how that's been real to us, mm -hmm. how we've come to know that, how that's become a applicable to how we live, how that's changed how we live, and uh, and just our experiences just with God in general. You see, everyone out there has an opinion of God. They've all uh, heard something, and in some cases, not great things. And perhaps even from the church, um, you've heard things where, you know, perhaps that doesn't quite line up with the God of Scripture uh, that we're going to talk about here on, on our unedited time. And so, discover God, a big part of who we are. We're going to be um, taking you through different points and uh, just really asking you just to consider it, examine it, um, look into it, and uh, join us on this journey as we discover uh, community, as we discover purpose, and as we discover God together. Mm -hmm. So now what? I think there's a lot of things that we talked about today that can become applicable throughout this week. Mm -hmm. um, I would encourage you to maybe phone a friend. Maybe that's where you need to start. Uh, maybe send that email you need to send. Maybe reach out to someone. Uh, get out in your community. Uh, go grab a coffee somewhere. Uh, 
Go bowling. Yes, perhaps. go bowling. Yeah. Yes. Eastview Bowl Eastview uh, Bowl does a really awesome. good job. <laughs> Check them out. Um, shout out to them. But also just, yeah, just, just get out and about and uh, reach out. And uh, I just feel like we're coming into a season where community is important. And uh, where we just mm -hmm. want to encourage you just to reach out to your friends, reach out to your community, support your city. Uh, times are tough at, at, for, for a lot of people right now. So just make sure that uh, m maybe just say hi to someone in general that you don't normally just reach out to. I think that goes a long way. And so uh, just want to encourage you to do that yeah that's awesome and if you um, have anything that you would like to share with us please feel free to write it and put it in the comments below or if you'd like to private message us you can do that with the dm or our email that will appear on the screen in a little bit um, at the conclusion of each of our um, episodes we're going to take some time to pray and to many of you that might not make any sense and that's mm -hmm. fine and so you can listen as we go but we're talking to who we believe god is um, and uh, asking him to help us and guide us and to share with us uh, you can do that with closing your eyes. You can do that with walking around a room. You can yeah. do that with your hands closed. There is no way when you are having a relationship, talking, it's again, community again, right? Talking to our mm -hmm. father. So I'm going to close today with prayer. But if you're someone out there tuning in um, and you need prayer, uh, please, please, that's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. So just DM us, like I said, or email, and we would love to be praying for you throughout this week um, and figuring out ways to help you. So let's pray. And we'll conclude. Oh, Father God, I just thank you so much for this time that we've been able to uh, broadcast online, that we even have access mm -hmm. to uh, do this on social media. I thank you for that today. And Father, whoever's tuning in and whoever needs to hear um, about you, about maybe community, about their purpose, Father, I just ask that you stir their heart, Father. Give them courage to reach out to us if they need it, Father. And Lord, I just ask that you protect each person that's tuning in, Father, and their families and their homes, and just make yourself known to each and every one of them. So we thank you for today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So thanks for joining us. Uh, this was our first episode of Unedited. Uh, reach out to us, DM us, uh, email us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, leave something in the comment section. And we look forward to seeing you next week at Unedited. First episode, that was good. my friend. Yep. Cheers. <laughs> Was that okay or is that weird? Because <laughs> I wait, because yeah. you go slow. Yeah, I was just like. So I'm like, <laughs> like do I go in? Well, that would be our thing. It would be like, if we could ever perfect this. This will become a meme. Or, or we won't. <laughs> you what are. What is this? <laughs> what's happening? Okay, what, what now, now what? Now what? There you go. Not what now? You just completely changed it. Okay. We never once said that. <laughs> now what? Okay. All right. Yeah. And in three, two.